See, this is why we celebrate resurrection, because we're celebrating the one who claimed to be God and showed that he was God, as Acts chapter 1 puts it, by many infallible, irrefutable proofs. So he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me. Verse 7, if you had known me, you would have known my Father. Also from now on, you know him, and you have seen him. Okay, Mark, can I get a consensus? Is Jesus like making some pretty serious claims here? What is he claiming? God. Now, anybody can claim God. I remember one time I used to go to Bring Large Church over on Crenshaw Boulevard years ago, and I used to have this counselor work with me named Lois, and this guy walked in the church. You know how you did these wackos and nothing? He came to well, I'm God. And she said, God, well, what's your last name? Like, is your name God? What's your last name? Anybody can claim. God, there are people that claim to be God. There are people that claim to be the Messiah today. Thousands of people claim to be the Messiah. Okay, your talk is cheap. Why should we believe your Messiah? We hear you loud and clear. But why should we believe your Messiah? So, he says, verse 8, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it would be enough for us. And Jesus said to him, if I've been so long with you, you have not known me, Philip. He that has seen me, what? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I don't speak of my own initiative, but it's the Father in me who does the words. Believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Otherwise, believe because of the very works themselves. When was the last time you raised somebody from the dead? And when was the last time you raised yourself from the dead? That's what Easter resurrection is about. It's about Christ raising himself. It's one thing, Devin, to raise somebody else from the dead. That means you're pretty powerful, right? Can you imagine, you ever, you ever get somebody to jump? Okay, why do you have to give a person to jump? Because what? Their battery died, right? Their battery is dead. Do you give people, can you imagine giving somebody a jump from a dead battery? How powerful would that battery have to be? <laughs> In fact, you can't even give usually a person a jump just by cooking the cable. You have to do what first? Turn your engine on. Jesus is, the, the analogy is, here's a dead battery just making itself start to life. Now we can properly and appropriately look at the resurrection account the objective evidence of Christ's resurrection. John 19, 31. I want you to think about this. You ever lose a loved one? It feels, I don't know about you, but for the first several weeks, it just, you, you just, you don't feel right, do you? It's just something, I mean, if you just found out you got, even if they left you $800 million, you don't feel right when you lose somebody that you love, whether it's a friend or relative, you don't feel right. Has anybody experienced that? It, you, you just, kind of, you kind of feel empty, don't you? When Paul Paul passed away. For, for months, I just, I'm empty. Yeah, you just landed a great big deal. So, I fought this one. Okay? What do I care about that? Well, this is where they were. See, we read the story backwards. We think, how do you think they were expecting Jesus to raise from the dead? Do you know that his very own followers, despite being told in the Matthew 26, 31, that I'm going to be killed and in three days raised, I'll meet you in Galilee. Do you really think they believed him? They didn't even understand what he meant. They were devastated. So I want you to picture Mary Magdalene and the other women that followed Jesus. It says this. Verse 31, the Jews, because it was the day of the preparation, so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath. What's that? Saturday? From last week. What's that? Saturday, Saturday? Passover, Saturday. It was a high day. And they asked Pilate that their legs might be broken. See, the way the guys would continue to stay, they could stay on the cross for, for sometimes days. As you were suffocating, what you would do, Manon, is you'd lift up on your legs, you, you know, you, you get a deep breath and it would give you some more time. But if they broke your legs, you couldn't lift it up anymore and that would just almost like kill you instantly. The shock and then all the lungs, lungs collapsing. So they went to the other two people. See, these are the facts of the resurrection. We'll see in a moment that the reason why they didn't break Jesus' leg was because of something prophetic that was said thousands of years earlier. 
Isn't that amazing? About the Passover lamb. When you get the Passover lamb, don't break any of his bones. Watch what it says here. It says, mm -hmm. um, first 32, so the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man and of the other who was crucified with him. But coming to Jesus, when they saw it, he was what? He was weak. He wasn't as strong as the other guys. No. He told you, I what? Lay it down on my own initiative. You know what? I'm going to say something. Understand me, he, he would never do this. Do you know if Jesus wanted to, he could still be on that cross today? Survive. No, he could have. He could have rejuvenated himself every day. He gave up his, he gave up his life. They didn't kill him, per se, so he goes on to say he was already dead. Now, this is what gets really, really serious. Um, verse 33. The cover of the Jews, when they saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. These are for the people who came to the Passover plot. They said, Jesus wasn't really dead. Go to the, Jap the Journal of the American Medical Association. They will tell you when someone dies and pierces their heart, there's a water sack around the pericardium, and the water will come out and somebody's dead. I'm going to sell the passion again. That was, that was amazing. And he, gets that, he puts that spear in his side, and you see the blood and the water. But this is what gets me, like Yvette. This is what, man, look, somebody get me on TV or something. I mean, please. I'm so excited about being able to say, I can argue this from this text of Scripture that I can proclaim that Christianity is the true faith and that Jesus is the true living God. Because he has something that most people will tell you that is all you need in a court of law. He has eyewitness. The writer of the story, John. See, John sets up this case so beautifully. Notice how John puts it. He says this. Verse 34, verse 34, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with the spear of the and the blood and water came out. And he who has seen, or he who has seen has testified. Who is he talking about? Himself. You know what he's saying in our terminology? I'm accounting to you what I witnessed. I saw this. I didn't read it in a book. It wasn't passed down to me as folklore. You ever have some, you, any of you ever experienced phenomena that most people would believe? Has anybody ever experienced something like nobody would believe, but you know what happened? That's what John was saying. He says, I know because I was there. He goes on to say, and he who has seen has testified in his testimony. And watch what he said. Not only am I telling you, I'm telling you what I'm telling you is what? I'm not, I'm not making a claim. I'm telling you what I saw indeed happen. That's why when we say Christ is risen, he's risen indeed. It true, I saw, but John is dispelling this myth that he wasn't dead. I saw him die. Peter can't claim that. Why? Peter gone. He got a little scared. And, all, and the rest is, everybody talk about Peter, where are the rest of the cats? They were not there either. They were scared. So he says, and he who has seen Ted is testifying, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he's telling you the truth, so that you may also believe. For these things came to pass to fulfill the scripture, not a bone of him shall be broken. Exodus 12, 46, write that down, go look at it. That's why they didn't break his legs. And he says in verse 37, and again, another scripture says, they shall look on him that they pierced, Zechariah 12, 10, a, a prophet read who prophesied thousands of years before Christ ever came into existence. He prophesied about Jesus who was going to be killed. How many of you take your life seriously? How many of you like me? Like, I don't sit around thinking about my mortality all the time, but how many of you think about your mortality or every Like, a little every so something. Like, you go to a funeral, you ever think, you know what? Anybody, let me see if I can hear Anybody else have to be like, let me see him. Oh, I can go with you. There was a time I wouldn't be. You wouldn't be getting there. I can go to preach it. Sit in the mortuary. How long did we have? I can't move for like seven hours. You know why? Because 
did this work. They don't mean a thing. Because the rest makes the cook. 